So the pattern we're going to tie is um, called the Drake. It is basically an easy peasy upside down done pattern that Roy Christie invented. Uh, I just came up with a different uh, winging technique uh, for this um, just to make it a little bit more robust in the wing and uh, to be able to float a heavier fly, a fairly large fly if you consider the size of drakes, the exogenias, um, the big drakes in, in this part of the world can get up to an inch, inch and a half in length and other parts of the world are even larger than that from my experience with the Danicas and the red spinners in Bosnia. So I just felt I'd uh, just like to play with a different, more robust wing to give it a little bit of floatability. So I'm running a Daiichi 1167 in a size 12 and I'm running 18 knot white nano silk. So the 12 aught that we that we have in the company is um, has a 1.9 kilo breaking strength, so that's about 3.6 pounds, 6-7 pounds breaking strength. That makes it one of the strongest threads in the world, uh, even at a very small, thin diameter, uh, 18 aught or 50 denier or 30 denier, and the 12 aught is a 50 denier. So I'm just going to remount the vise a bit, get ready to apply the tails. I'm using Cocte Leon here. Um, so we'll take a half a dozen or more to up to ten fibers off. Just bring them parallel to the stem, tear them away. It virtually makes your tails points fairly equal, even. Match that up to a body length at, at least on most drake patterns the tails are, are quite large and then I'll just attach that and just run turns, tight turns all the way down shank the hook to the top of where the bend is on the clink hammers fold the excess material back build back over top and then just cut a little bit here at the tail end just at a 45 so that I build a, a natural taper of the existing material in the underbody. You can of course do a wrap behind the tail if you like to splay the, the tail. Uh, a lot of the traditionals would probably only run two or three fibers of the Cocteleon for the tail but I because it's a heavier pattern I like running a bit more uh, material. So now that we've built up our underbody, there's a material from Hens that uh, is used to create the body itself. And it's really just a plastic strip, vinyl strip, with a sticky back. Um, it has, in this case, yellow brown and a little silver trim in it, gold trim in it. And I'll cut this at a 45 degree angle at the end. And I'll tie that little point in right at the base of the tail. I need to bring my thread to the back. Just make sure that we're at the base of the tail to do our first wrap. thread back forward and half hitch off. So here at this point I'll start my wraps. And just do fairly tight wraps, just matching. So I get a beautiful segmented body. And then we'll tie that off. We'll straighten it out in the hook a little bit. And the hook out the vise. Just bring more upward. And that's our finished body on this pattern. 
So here, we just build up a bit of a base. We're going to apply the elk hair. I want it to stick to a thread base. And I'll wax that. So I have a little bit of wax on my forefinger. And that just gives the elk hair something to hold to instead of going either to bare metal or an unwaxed thread. At this point, we'll flip this over and we'll <coughs> attach elk hair. So if I was going to tie a Danica, then I'd probably use a dyed yellow elk um, or even some of the big green drakes, more of an olive elk hair for the wing. Uh, but I also have a natural piece here that I like to use on these brown drakes. And as you can see, there's uh, everything from a very dark black to very dark chestnutty brown to the, the lighter browns. Um, and I prefer the lighter brown for the wing on this particular pattern. And so I'll just take a small clump and cut that out. From here, we'll be able to just clean. You can see I've got a fair bit of fiber here under fur in there. I'll clean that out. Make sure that all that under fur is really out of there because um, if you don't get it out, you'll have a very difficult time tying the elk hair down onto the hook shank. So now that it's all cleaned out, we'll match the tips up by just placing it in a hair stacker. Give it a few taps on the table. And then I'll turn it just before I pull it apart, the hair stacker apart in it. That will have all my ends all nicely matched up. Grab that. And at this point, what I'll do is measure off my hair, and in this case I want it about hook shank length, or from the eye of the hook to the back of the body itself, so it's about there. And I'll redo it here. Okay, and then one, two wraps. Don't forget, this is 18 knot thread, so we're going to pull this fairly tight. This has a very high breaking yield, and that's why I, I use the Nano Silk. And I'll take a few wraps in front. And this helps secure it all into place. Now, all the elk hair will come up. I've secured it, my thread around the hook shank. I'll bring all the elk hair up. can be tricky. And a nice tall clump. And we'll just go around the base a few times. That's my first wrap. together. The second wrap. Third wrap. You can see how much I'm actually bending the hook and the vise with this 18 knot. So like I said, it's very robust. Four or five wraps around the base, and then secure that off. Not done there yet. We'll pull that even tighter together once we get a little bit more robustness on our thread by putting on a bit of a dubbing noodle. And so we'll just lightly spin on some polypropylene, and I'm using just a very light brown. We'll 
flare that out so that it, it'll apply very thinly and easily. And again, I pre-waxed my thread. As you can see, the noodle actually gets fairly thin applying it this way with, with your rotary. And we'll just tighten that up a little bit more. Now I have a little bit of mass on my thread, so when I do my wraps, once I get into, just use this excess thread up here at the front. And then start building. now around that thread I can pull this together and higher and I'll just take a few turns around right around the back of the wing and bring a few turns up to the front It's tightening up even more. Another turn around the body. And then we'll start to build our thorax bit here. At this point, I can throw in a dubbing noodle, or a dubbing loop, I mean, and we'll just... Doesn't that be a very large dubbing loop? As you can see, my threads disappeared right into my dubbing. And I have a loop with a little bit of dubbing on it, and I'll just take another small amount here just to build the thorax region up a, a tiny bit. But keep your dubbing very thin. It doesn't take a lot of material in this area to uh, build up your thorax. Leave lots of room at the head. Or behind the eye of the hook. Good one hook eye distance. And now I'll prep my CDC. Now I'm using just a good brown CDC. I'll run two or three fibers that are about the same length and about the same bulkness. So as you can see, I have a couple of fibers here. We'll open them up. And I'll have them facing, there's a natural curve to the CDC. I'll make sure both feathers are facing in the same direction as well. I'll put that in a little tool here that was developed by Mark Pettigine. For using CDC, you're probably familiar with it. It's just a little alligator style clip. And we'll grab the CDC the other alligator clip holding it firmly and now I'll trim away the stem of the CDC itself we'll place this in our dubbing loop make sure it's nicely waxed you can also do this with just a split thread if you choose, uh, which I would do on smaller patterns, but on these larger patterns I uh, prefer to run a dubbing loop itself. Uh, it just gives me extra thread and a position where I can still 
have have the ability to pull the material tight and um, have the extra robustness of having a second thread in place to help keep it all together. So now I'll just take my dubbing hook and spin all this. And it sort of out of place. Just remove that. And a few good spins. And lift everything up and go around the wing. Lift it all up, including the CDC. Go around the wing. Again, I'm tightening up even more on my posting of my elk hair. See, if you don't get it right away, I wouldn't worry about too much because you'll just build it up more, build your post up even more as you come around. here I'll bring up I just have a few small fibers of CDC right at the very end of the loop and that's perfect and it gives me a little bit of legging further forward around two or three wraps up and over once in front once up and over behind it once in the front once And we'll have a small head to finish off with here. Snip away the butt end of the loop, and now we can just do uh, two or three knot whip, three knot whip finish. Do that once or twice, whatever you're comfortable with. And we we'll almost have a finished fly. At this point I take a pair of curved scissors, uh, you need a good pair of curved scissors, and I'll lift my wing up to finish off my fly. I'll have a, a cut in the back here, and right where the hackle points start, I'm just wanting to take that back, and there's my finished wing. And just before I finish here, I'll take my CDC picker, which is, um, as you can see, it's just a, like a bodkin, but it has three points on it, and they have little hooks on the points, and you can just tease out any CDC from the top that has been wrapped up into the wing or around the wing. Now this fly will float exceptionally well, um, it, because it has the CDC it leaves a very nice leggy footprint on the water surface. Um, people have asked if I've had issues getting the hook set with this. I have on smaller trout, but generally when the drakes are out um, we stock very very large trout from the rivers uh, that they're in. Um, it brings a lot of very large trout out. Uh, even though they're, they're still spooky, they're still leery, um, they have an opportunity, when they have an opportunity to take a big drake, uh, they hit it very hard and uh, turn on it very quickly, so my hook sets are almost always positive. If not, then I would canter the hook off to the left or the right if I'm fishing over smaller fish. And that is the drake pattern Then I tie. I hope you enjoy that. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.